<clears throat> hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. I hope you brought your coffee. We're going to be talking about Rob's. That's my Ryobi Oscillating Belt and Spindle Sander. Now, there are other brands of this, so I have to clarify that about those brands and this brand, because what we're doing is we're embarked on a series on this machine here of improvements that I have planned to make to it in a lot of different areas, so that this machine will become even more useful than it has been for the last 20-some years that I've been using it. But they still make this thing pretty much like it is. But anyway, let's talk about the different brands and the differences between all the other OBS out there and the ROBS. Uh, we have Triton, uh, which makes that a TROBS. We have a WEN version, which is a WOBS. We have a Grizzly version, which is a GOBS. And then we have a Harbor Freight version, which is a BOBS. All right, you thought I was going to get a hot tough one, didn't you? No, Bob's is because that is made by Bauer. Is named the company that actually makes it, but they sell it at Harbor Freight. Um, anyway, of those brands, they all are the similar to each other. Now, there might be some subtle differences. I've never really had my hands on any of those machines, so it's hard to compare it 100% to the Rob's. But I will tell you that there are three distinct differences between all of them and the Rob's. <clears throat> and I'll go over that. And the reason we have to do this is because those differences are going to make a difference in how you might make your jig when you look at the concept of me doing some of the things I do. For example, this here uh, that I've already done. It's really been nice since I put this on. I don't know why I didn't do it before. When times we heard that story in our heads when we do an improvement. Anyway, but I have other things I want to do to it. Now that I've been using it for a long time, I think I have some pretty good ideas of how to make this thing even better. Um... They still make it almost identical to the way it is now. I'm not sure there's much of a difference. But they did also make a new version of theirs, uh, of a Rob's, and it's uh, slightly different because rather than having this plastic frame all encased on top of a table, it has a square tubular frame. And so it's, it looks a little different. And it's about 10% less than what this one costs. I don't know much about it. There isn't much out there in video, but uh, I assume that it's just a structural difference. And probably some differences in the dust collection. And I don't even want to start on dust collection today because that's going to be a subject all to itself. And I don't know how well I can address the dust collection on other machines uh, because I've never had my hands on one and see how they really work in comparison. So, I can show you what I got here, and as I do these different things, you'll have to maybe apply some of that to those other machines. So, what are the differences? All those other machines had the same difference. They're all alike, in, from what I can tell, except for the Rob's. And Rob's is different because of these three reasons. The first one is, if you hadn't noticed, is the rotation of the belt. This one goes this direction. And all the others go this direction. It means that the tracking mechanism for uh, adjusting the tracking of the belt is over here. And the knob to take this on and off is over here. And it turns in the opposite direction. So, if you do what I do on this one, you may have to reverse how you do it. Simply because it runs in the opposite direction. Um... That's two of the differences. The third one is we're going to show you the improvements I've made to mine today. You won't really have them. You won't be able to do them on your machines, on the, all the others, because that is this miter bar slot. Rob's is the only one that has it. You look at all the other machines, they don't have it. Do you need it? Now and then I've used it. It's kind of nice, but I've actually started to improve it. And I'll show you. And on those machines, you won't be able to do anything with the miter slot thing because you don't have the miter slot. Now, you could probably put some kind of miter slot on yours if you wanted to. Get very creative. There's other ways you could set up a better fence system because what they call their fence system is this little fella right here. And it just sets down. You have one bolt that goes into it and it lines up here on the belt. For you to be able to push it because since my belt goes this way 
If I'm holding something against it and I loosen my grip, it'll shoot off to the left like crazy. This is to help prevent that from shifting if you really want to apply a nice straight edge on something. So, anyway, this thing lacks a lot. And it, I used it for a while because it's all there was. But I now use a little different method. Half a long time I used the miter gauge. But that's because I have this. So the other guys are probably going to have to build a little bit bigger unit fence system that will actually clamp to your outer perimeter in order to get a fence. Um, I have a couple ideas how you can do that with a miter gauge. Take the bar off the bottom and use it on a plate instead that attaches so that you can still get your angles and stuff because you're going to find that not only sanding 90 degrees but sanding any degree you want uh, between there and zero is pretty easy to do when you're using the miter slot or the miter gauge with the adjustability of it. So anyway, uh, now that you understand the three differences, if you want to discuss in comments or discuss ideas that I might have about how to do the other machines, but since you don't have the miter slot, uh, I might even do an open discussion right through my video. So anything you have to say about it, leave the comment. And if I can answer it simply, I will. If I can't, I'll include in the next video what I'm doing on this. So today we're going to talk about this miter slot and how to improve uh, doing using some kind of fence system on this machine to make it even better to use. So most of the time it's up this way when I'm using my fence, but I can tip it down to use it. Uh, I should tell you that besides this frame, the other improvement I've made, I changed on my unit, is I drilled a little quarter inch hole right here in the miter slot, about a half inch off of the edge, and I put one at each end. And that is so that I have, you now can put a simple quarter inch bolt in here, and I'll have a stop for my fence, and you'll see how that all works. I also have this simple little piece of scrap wood with a couple holes so that I can adjust where that miter gauge might stop based on whatever angle I'm putting on it. So when I show you how this works, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's take a quick look at the miter gauge itself. I keep it back here. Whoop. I keep it back here. And it's just a simple miter gauge. You've seen it before. It goes a full 60 degrees. Had a has a, an adjustable stop at 45, 0, and 45. So, and all I did was I put a fence on this to give me that same fence effect right here. So if I want to sand something, I can just set it right against here. And now I can sit here and sand it, rotate it 90 degrees, and touch it here three or four times on each side, rotating it. When I pull it away, you should have a nice square surface on the end of this. So it makes doing, especially squaring up your ends, a lot easier when you have something that you know for sure it's nice and square. But that also holds true for angles. So if you're doing a miter on something and you need to do the miter slot sand it to exactly 45, you can easily reset this thing to 45. Let me set this block of this. If I push down, it drops down and scares the heck out of me every time. So anyway, all I did was on here, I put a nice board and a t-slot in the top so that i can make attachments for this and i'll be making some attachments to this as we go along as i find uses for them and i'll let you know but for now just as a basic fence you sometimes want to do it 90 but sometimes you want to do it maybe a 45 instead of a 90. dogs are biking something going on so now you're at a 45, but you'll notice I'm pretty far away from there now. So that's why the miter gauge works nicely, so that if you have to do it on angles, I can put it back to zero, and now it's set to there. So if I want to do it 45, 
I can take this and adjust it and slide it. You have two bolts that go on the back side here. There. And on this side, you'll notice I only have one here. I have a T-bolt through it, which goes into my T-slot that I made for it here so that I can slide this up and down. <clears throat> now, because of inherently, it doesn't take a lot to hold this fence in place. So I have found very quickly having only one bolt in here is good enough. As far as keeping it square and all that, it pulls square against it without any problem. So if I loosen this up, I can now slide this fence anywhere I want. So now if I go to 45, I'll put that back before I lose it. And now I go to 45, let's say, or any degree, I now have to push that up. And when I get it where I want it, I can snug it down in just a couple of seconds. And now I can do an open 45. Oops, that's not tight. I can do an open 45 here. If I wanted to do a closed 45, then I would have to loosen my nut. And now I turn the 45 this way, slide it up to where I want it, lock it down, and now I have an inside 45 here instead if I want to push into the corner now again because the rotation this way you always want your fence on this side and your piece on that side so that it's pushing it into the fence which is why you only need one bolt here because any pressure going against this fence is always pushing into the fence so you don't really need two in here uh, like you might if you were using this on the table saw where you might get some real jerky thing going on um, here, that isn't any of that is necessary. So that's why I just use one. It makes it much easier to loosen, readjust it to where I want it, and all that sort of thing. So, but there's something else. Let me reset this back to zero. Most of what we're going to do here is on zero. Okay. So, whoops, that's right there. Here we are. Now we set to zero. So now, the other thing you need to realize is where this fence is. If I'm sanding something against that fence, against that sanding there, I gotta make sure that I'm on the plate on this. Let me show you what I'm talking about the plate. So if I loosen that, let's pull this up and off for a moment. You see the plate right here. Right here is the front roller this is the idle roller. This is the drive roller. Uh, this is the one that is going to be driving the belt. It's a three inch uh, diameter circumference on this thing. So this actually makes it a nice little uh, drum on the very end. You get half of it easily to use it on the drum. But if you're going to do flat sanding, you got to get up on that plate. Don't get it over here. So if I set the stop here, Anything I put in here is going to get curved on the edge right here. So you want to make sure this stop is up onto the plate itself. You will notice on the factory one, if you set it in place and bolt it down like so, look at where that comes out. It comes out right on the flat of the plate. That's why you have to be up there. They already knew that. So you want to make sure that when you're using this plate or using this fence, you got to get to this point is where you really kind of want it. So if you set it to an angle and you push it up, well, let's get radical again. So if you set it to 45 and now you push it up, you can bring this back a little ways so that you're up getting closer to the sand and it gives you more flat surface as you need it. So anyway, keep in mind that you always want this to be to the on all the way onto the plate for your flat sanding. So now then now that you know that that means that now 
what would be nice is to be able to, on the fly, get its track back. I would like to have it set there and stay there. Well, I don't need to clamp it down because all my pressure is going this way. So all I got to do is put a stop behind it here, which is what this is. So if I put the bolt in here and stop, you can see where it stops right here, which is beyond that belt. That belt, let me move it down. Okay, now I can see the edge of that plate. I should have marked it here. But you want to make sure that whether you're at an angle and everything, you're there. If I use just a bolt, I am too far back. It should be up here. That's why I have this with two holes in it. I can put this at any. And you can make something fancy. I just haven't. That seems to do the job. Again, I'm still too far back. So if I use this bolt. Now this one's a little off center still, so if I put it on this way, my stop is right there, which is pretty close to perfect. Or I can just turn the bolt around, whoops, and now I'm up on the plate by about a half inch. So I can actually adjust it, and if I'm at an angle, you may want to make and have this so that you can adjust it at your stop. But that stop is all you need. Now when I put something up here and I'm sanding, remember, everything's getting pushed that direction. So that will hold your fence in place. You don't have to worry about it going this way. Then it's not going to go unless you push it. So it makes for an easy stop. And that's how you use it. Uh, so I think that's about it on this whole thing. I wanted to show you what this is like. I want to introduce you to the trobs and wobs and gobs and bobs. Whew, that's hard to remember all that. Anyway, the robs is the one I have. If you have a different brand and you can't quite figure out how to do something that you want to do that you see me do on here, leave me a comment. We'll figure it out together. If you'd like, I'll give you some helpful hints that may be how I would approach it. So anyway, that's it. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below in the comment section. I always enjoy reading them. Uh, your thoughts about everything is great. If you think that I'm missing something here, bring that up so that I can make sure I can correct it the next time. So anyway, I think that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or that, like I said, I enjoy reading all that stuff. If you learned something here or you like this video, Hit that like button. Let's me know that I'm doing something right. Most importantly, though, please, if you would, come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Mm. Thanks. And we'll see you guys all again very soon.